Dracaris. Hi everyone, I'm Luke Hector and you're watching The Broken Meeple. This is a YouTube channel about board games where I give reviews, top tens and my honest opinions regardless of the consequences. We'll get on with the show in just a minute, but first a quick word from my sponsor. As a fellow gamer, you'll understand this is unacceptable. The solution? Head down to my new sponsor, Kiender.co.uk. Kiender stocks many of the hot new releases as well as some old hidden gems. Free delivery on orders over £30, further discounts on bulk purchases, and even 5% of your spending refunded back to you as points to be used for further discounts down the line. If you use the referral link in the description below and sign up for a new account, you'll get 5% discount on your first order over £60. So let's make gaps in your collection a thing of the past. Get down to Kiender and start saving today. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the video. Get on with it. Oh yeah, we're going there, yeah. This is the Wormsband versus Wingspan debate that's been reigning supreme on Facebook right now. A lot of people in America have already had their copies. Unfortunately, the UK was delayed, so as much as I would have loved to have got a review out earlier this month, I've had to make do with the fact that, well, Brexit and everything. But finally, I have got both of these games to compare because I've already been a lover of Wingsman, as you know, you know, 10 out of 10. It was on my top 20 of her, like all time, you know, you can see that video. But Wormspan, when it got announced, I was like, hmm, okay, so you're basically doing Wingspan with some extra bits, is that it? Uh, why are you using dragons? Birds was a better theme. And I had my thoughts on the subject and loads of other people did as well because the debates are insane online. You know, you've got people who will absolutely detest Wingspan but love this and then some who are vice versa and then you've got people arguing about whether this is a complete cash grab, which as I say, I can understand the arguments and whether like dragons are an acceptable theme or not. It's Oh, blimey, if there's one thing that Stonemaier does know when it comes to business, it's how to get people hyped about a game. So the question is, though, is that I have now got both of these games. I have now played, you know, Wormsband plenty of times, solo and multiplayer. I obviously have my thoughts on Wingspan. The question is, is this a replacement? Is it something that can sit alongside? Is it a waste of time? We're about to go into honest depths here. I hope they remember you. The game functions in many ways like Wingsman. You have your action board where you have three different rows. You will build up a row of cards and using these cards you build yourself an engine to generate resources and play more cards. The difference is from Wingsman is that you now have to actually excavate the spaces in order to place a dragon card in by the use of these little square cave cards. They get you bonuses as you play them but they allow you to then place a dragon over said cave and these will have the similar powers that Wingsman did. You know, when played, end of round, end of game, or activated ones which is done by your little meeple which is used as a little tracker for when you activate a row so you start here get a resource you know go to here activate the dragon go to here get a movement you know that sort of thing from left to right as with Wingspan, you have end of round gold tiles with different criteria to meet, like having lots of uh, tr triggered abilities on your player mat, having aggressive dragons on your player mat, having a bunch of eggs, that kind of thing, and your score points, first, second, third, fourth, except the ties are friendly here. The main new part to sort of mention, really, is a couple of things. Firstly, you now use coins as your action markers. So you don't use action cubes and you don't have a set amount each round. You will gain six of these coins every round, but you might gain more coins through the abilities of various dragons or, the, or something, you know, the guild, which we'll get onto in a minute. And so you might not necessarily be doing six actions in a round. You might do seven, you might do eight, you might even do nine if you're really lucky. But the idea is, is that it's now no longer fixed. And you can even save these from round to round if you really want, though I've yet to see anybody actually care about doing that. But the main new thing to mention is this dragon guild board. So there's an icon in the game where you get to circle around this track and each game you will have a different guild, one of four, and they have abilities that you can um, place a cube on to trigger once your marker gets halfway round and back to the start on this board. Some of them give you more cards, give you more resources, let you do stuff for free, or they could be just generic victory points. But either way, there'll be a different one each game, it will be scaled for player count, and so this represents an element that wasn't present in the original wingspan. 
Other than that, you do have some other differences, like you no longer have a dice tower with the dice, so getting resources is now fixed and certain and deterministic. It's no longer done by die rolling, and you don't have any end-of-game objective cards. They are entirely gone. Instead, some of the dragons will have end-game scoring opportunities, which is kind of a bit like what I think Wingspan Asia threw in, or was it Wingspan Oceania? It was one of the two that threw it in. And so now you don't have to worry about choosing a goal at the start of the game. But for the rest of the game, it's very similar to Wingsman. I mean, it says it is a Wingsman game, but yeah, don't let people kid you into thinking that this is completely different from Wingsman. It really isn't. So we'll start with the good stuff. The game is actually pretty approachable to learn, even if you're not necessarily a Wingspan aficionado. If you have played Wingspan before, the rules to this are going to come like second nature. You know, I read the rule book, you know, word for word, and it's just like, yeah, that's just that, that's just that, that's just that. I mean, the game is 90% Wingspan at the end of the day. That helps. But it's not just simply, oh, I've played Wingspan and therefore I already know the game. You also do have a pretty decent rule book. It's not particularly long. It's got an icon reference on the back although I would have liked again reference cards, but the rules in here are pretty easy to follow despite the fact that it is quite text heavy for a rule book. I was kind of expecting more pictorial examples, but there's not that many rules to learn so it's not too bad, but yeah, just maybe would have liked a few more of those. But that being said, the rules are written well, they're easy to understand, and I think there was only one FAQ moment I had and it quickly got resolved. So for the most part, this is a pretty decent rule book and therefore the game, even though it's more complex than Wingspan, is still easy enough to get into if you've never played a Wingspan game before. That's easy! The game is not terribly expensive either and you're getting a decent amount of quality in the components here. You know, the artwork is very nice watercolor artwork, and although I will stress that I actually think the artwork is better in Wingspan with the birds. I'm not quite sure it fits with this, but we'll get on to that a bit later. But generally it still looks very colorful and very nice on the table. You've got the sort of slightly almost linen, I don't think they're quite linen finished, but they are certainly like, I'd probably they are linen finished actually, they're just very thin linen, but they are very nice quality cards and I probably still still recommend sleeving them if you're going to hang on to this game, but they'll still remain pretty sturdy. I mean, I haven't sleeved this game yet and, you know, they've still remained sturdy. Nothing's broken so far. You've got resource trays for the tokens, which are cool, and the eggs are always a nice thing. I mean, now they're speckly eggs this time, so we've got speckled gym eggs, I guess. But, you know, everything else in here, they're like your player board, fold-out board, pretty easy to see what's what. The rules are explained down the side, so again, it's pretty easy to get into. You know, the only bit component-wise I am a little bit like, on is the fact that yes you've got cubes again I mean cubes are always a downer but also I have to say that as much as the rest of the components are good I do think the coins are terrible these are basically just cardboard coins and they've got this it's it, they look like cardboard coins wrapped in aluminium foil it's just they look a bit odd they don't even look like coins as what they're meant to be they're sort of dragon scale foil cardboard tokens it's kind of weird but you know if you're going to put the effort into making everything else look good you know maybe some other form of token a, a wooden token I mean yes I don't expect you to put metal coins in this but you know just something maybe a little bit better than that because this feels a bit chinzy compared to the rest your mother if you're a combo building fan then well this one's going to give you that in spades I mean the original wingspan did as well so it's not like that anything's really changed in that degree but you do have a decent amount of combo building in this because there's certainly more abilities that you are triggering overall in the game a lot of these dragons will have various things that go on some of them are like the hatchlings will have multiple abilities on them like you know you'll get a, a thing when you place it down you'll get a thing when you cash food on it you'll get a thing when it's certain amount of food is cached on it so you know a lot of these dragons can have a decent amount of abilities to use but while you're also juggling things like the dragon guild board and all the different spaces you can trigger because unlike in wingspan normally the action was on the last uncovered space here you essentially let your worker go from left to right until it gets to a no entry sign so all the steps in between the spaces are an individual bonus so you'll go right get this bonus do this dragon get this bonus do this dragon get this bonus do this dragon and so it, there's quite a lot of stuff that you can do here and I have seen some very interesting you know, strategies come out of this game in order to try and win I mean you can you know fill up your board although more on that a bit later you, you know with a lot of dragons you can certainly go for like tucking cards and caching cards and laying a bunch of eggs as normal but 
I've seen some other weird interesting stuff like using the hatchlings in bulk along with some of these end row abilities to just spam like you know cash food on them like crazy you know because the end of these boards no longer just give you a slightly upgraded you know thing that you were doing before like one extra card one extra egg instead they actually give you a means of tucking or cashing or you know laying eggs in addition to what other bonuses you were getting and you can use this as a good strategy not to say that wingspan is devoid of combo building there is plenty of stuff you can do in that game this one just kind of takes it a step up because it's upping the complexity therefore it is upping the regions of strategy and sort of options that you have now as much as i say that the game is 90 percent wingspan and i will stick with that one of the changes that I do particularly like is this Dragon Guild. And yes, at the end of the day, it's a themeless generic track. So yeah, it's not exactly blowing my mind here. But this does represent A, another strategy that you can do, but also getting these bonuses can be very useful to fuel other things that you do. But I just like the fact that you've got four of these guilds. I don't know where the other one's gone. The other one's gone missing somewhere. But yeah, maybe it's in the box. But I mean, having four of these, which are scaled for players, so you can have two to three player version, four to five player version, that each have slight twists on what abilities they give you can change some strategies up from game to game. I mean, if I take the Planes Guild, then there's a lot of abilities here that enable you to pay eggs or lay eggs for various different effects, but you can also have an in-game scoring where you get points for more eggs that you have. I mean, you already get a point for every egg. You can get even more points for eggs that you have with the Planes Guild. And then switch that up with the Seafarers that we played yesterday, in fact, uh, the last game we played. And you get to excavate spaces for free, you get to play uh, cards for free, but then you can also get points for having filled columns on your mat. So they do change things up nicely and give you just some other opportunities to get points. You know, you could go mad on a Dragon Guild strategy, circle around this thing loads, get all the bonuses, and then nab a bunch of the spots that give you physical victory points and use that as a good boost to your score this you know theme wise it may be ultimately 100% generic but I do like this new inclusion it wouldn't be a Stonemaier game if you didn't have the word Automna written on stuff though would you yep this one has a solo mode just like others and you can play it in two different modes you've got the very simple basic mode and then you've got something called the Ravel mode which you know R-A-V-E-L which essentially adds a little bit of interaction from the Automna that you don't get in a multiplayer game and how it bases its actions kind of based on what you're doing in your caves it's an interesting little variant and you can easily shove it in I mean it's not a particularly complex variant to use it's kind of like just playing the game on slightly hard mode I guess but honestly, I'm just fine with the normal Automna because it is one of the easiest Automnas to pilot in the world. It doesn't have an AI that specifically does anything to you. It doesn't have its own board or use resources or anything. Literally, all it does is flips over a card and moves a certain amount of spaces around the Dragon Guild track. And when it gets to these bits, it essentially does stuff, gets bonuses or gets stuff that earns it points and recycles cards out of the various markets. So it is obviously taking stuff from you. But the piloting of it is so quick. You know, other than when it triggers on one of those brown spaces on the guild board, which still doesn't take that long, the automata turn can literally just be, okay, flip a card, put a coin on the end of round scoring and move it two spaces on the track, done. Yeah, I kid you not, that's a typical Automna turn. It is lightning speed fast, which means you can get a solo game of this done in a decent 60 minute time frame, which is good. It's kind of the length of time that you would expect a Wingsman game to take. I understand this is very subjective, but the whole debate of dragons versus birds. I'm sorry, I don't like the theme that much with this. I mean, birds are interesting. They're animals. They're cool. And they're factual, real things. Dragons are just generic fantasy tropes that have been done to death like crazy. And I get why it's been done. A load of people complain that they didn't like birds. And they thought birds were a stupid theme. I still don't understand the logical reasoning for that. You know, what, you know, did a pigeon, you know, did a seagull nick your chips one day and now all of a sudden you've declared revenge on all birds I don't get it you know you prefer generic dragons to it but you know that is a subjective thing you're gonna like one of the themes you're probably not gonna like the other but the sort of art and graphic design that goes with it and some of the choices that we made in production I do find a little bit questionable here firstly yeah you've got this watercolor art for the dragons which looks nice but it is quite a small and condensed and it doesn't necessarily quite fit with the theme of the game but it also interferes with the graphic design a bit because the graphic design in this is very sort of downgrade from the previous version of Wingspan where there's quite a lot of stuff cluttering up the card space here particularly if you've got hatchlings with abilities and worse still because you've got all this stuff around the side that you kind of need to know when you're putting eggs on this thing you're typically covering up most of this artwork anyway so 
You know, because if you can't, you don't have a slot for an egg. I mean, why don't they? Why don't they put like a slot where you can put a physical egg down so you know if you've got enough room or not? But here, unless you want to forget how many eggs each dragon holds, you're going to, going to put all over the artwork, in which case the artwork there is kind of pointless anyway. But that's a small blemish. But I still think that theme wise, you know, birds are just more approachable. They're more interesting. They're, you know, non gamers are going to gravitate towards birds more than they are dragons. <laughs> You know, you pay money for games and you want the money to go towards good components and good art and, you know, good gameplay mechanics. Apparently, and I'm sure this probably cost at least a fiver in production, given how big this thing is, Stonemaier believed that what I wanted to spend my money on was a useless compendium dragon fact book. This is light. Why do I want this? I don't care. You know, if you gave me this in Wingsman, I'd actually think, great, you've given me a, a book where I can learn stuff about these different birds. It's like, you know, ooh, this bird has to wee on itself in order to keep cool in the hot sun. Yeah, bird, some birds do that, storks or whatever. It's like, look it up on Google. But here, what do I care about reading about these things? I mean, you know, I read this one. Uh, on several occasions, hikers are reported being guided to safety by a blue ghost. In each report, the ghost silently appears, identifies a path to safety, then disappears that's of what use to me. And people might argue it's world building. Look, I get that world building is important when you play something like Sleeping Gods, you know, a big epic story campaign game. An engine builder mechanical card game does not require world building. Did I miss something? I say it doesn't detract from the rating or the, or the game, but it's just like, you know, this game was clearly made as a means of saying, all right, all you lot who kept saying birds suck, here's one with dragons. Here you go, generic trope. You all like dragons, right? And people are eating it up like crazy. And I, I don't get it. I would have loved if this game just stuck with another animal theme. If you don't want to do birds, make this one reptiles. It doesn't have to be dragons, but make it reptiles. And we could have factual creatures and it could still look different. Keep the watercolor art in that. But... Ah, generic dragons, why? You got a problem with cartoons? Now when you add complexity to a game, you are no doubt going to add, you know, length and downtime. And oh boy, this one adds that in spades. This is a game I'm actually going to refuse to play with four or more players. I mean, Wingspan with four or more players was not the best either. It's not like it was one I sought out to do. I preferred to cap it at three. I will objectively refuse to play this at four. It takes way too long. You are hitting the two hour plus mark easily at times because you've got too many things that you can do, too many things that trigger on an explore action. The fact that people have a different number of these coins, which I think is such a terrible mechanic in this game. You know, I'll get on to exactly why in a minute, but because I might have six of these coins around, you might have nine, you're gonna do so much more than me and I'm gonna have to just sit here and wait for you to hurry up and finish your turns so that we can get on with the next round. But on top of that, you've got more abilities to look at. You've got lots of different little mini steps to trigger. You've got the effects of the Dragon Guild and you know, it, even though it feels like they tried to balance the number of turns with how much you have in Wingspan, this one just simply takes longer than the previous one. And the, the, the other one, Wingspan, works because it doesn't take too long, because it's approachable, because it's smooth and elegant. This one kind of feels like wingspan with extra steps. It's essentially a little bit more fiddliness here and there, which you don't need. You know, the cave cards, for example, I'm not the biggest fan of these. Yes, they get you bonuses when you play them, but when, you know, when when I did that podcast to say what were the differences between Wingspan and Wormspan, and you know, Stonemaier and that were crying out saying that, oh, this is fundamentally different. Look at all these differences to Wingspan. Oh my God, you could see the claw marks on the bottom of the barrel when you read that list of how much they were scraping it, trying to justify the differences. But in this case, in order to place a dragon on a space, you must now place a, another card on the space. Whippy. This is an extra hoop I have to jump through to do what Wingspan made me do just with one action. But these cave cards are actually slightly more annoying than they're worth because you play the cave card, then you play the dragon card, then you have a dragon that tucks cards. So I've got to tuck the card underneath the dragon but not over the cave card and then it just gets like becomes a bit of a fiddling mess. Again onto these coins, oh, I hate the fact that they've used coins instead of action markers, like a fixed set of action markers because coins are naturally currency in most Euro games. So people have that in their mindset. So to switch that from you know a currency to you know, an action marker is already a tricky thing, especially when these things don't really even look like coins, frankly. Really spectacular, spared no expense. You might think, well, it's easy. I just put a coin out. I just spend a coin in order to do this action. Now with an explore action, 
it's not too difficult because you can place it on your board and use it as a tracker. But, you know, typically what will happen is somebody will gain and lose coins by playing a dragon that needs a coin as a cost or by doing an action that gains them a coin, like the Dragon Guild or something, and they will forget maybe to spend a coin on an action or they won't take the coin themselves or they'll think, hang on a minute, I've got four coins, you've got five, you've got six. I could have sworn I got a coin at some point, didn't I? And how have I got one more coin in you? You went first. Have I not spent a coin in the last action? This happens every game, okay? And I've been guilty of this at times. I'm too busy trying to do all the various abilities on here that I'll do my turn and go, right, that's good, and think, hang on, did I spend a coin? Oh, damn, how do I track it now? You can't, because there's no fixed way of doing it. The wingspan little birdhouse, like the cubes little birdhouse upgrade things worked brilliantly because you knew that the round had eight actions and you put the things on the board and it tracked exactly eight actions. You knew that you had done way too, like, too many or too few by simply doing a count. The coins are just an unnecessary fiddly mechanic because the whole thing of, oh, you can keep them between rounds. I have never done that. I have never seen anyone else do that. It's pretty much pointless. If you can do the action now, just do it now. Here, take them. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? The game also has a little bit of an anticlimactic feel because you've got four columns here instead of five. And you might think, okay, that's going to make it easier to fill up all the slots, right? Yes and then some. In Wingspan, you had to be careful as to what you were doing. I mean, you could fill up every single slot in Wingspan, but man, you had to work for it. You really had to be gunning for that as a strategy. Most of the time, you really had to pick your battles in Wingspan as to which rows you're going to focus on or where you put your birds because there was it was very hard to fill up all your slots. So you knew that you couldn't do everything. Here, though, in every game I have played of this with multiplayer, I have finished with at least bare minimum three empty slots remaining and in more of those games I had one empty slot remaining or I had filled up every single slot. The game I played yesterday in fact I taught three new players this game right three new players two of which uh, they all played wingspan before but they had never played this one and all of us finished with only one empty square left or with you know sorry two empty squares one or fully filled. So it kind of feels like you can do everything in this game. As long as you don't build the crappiest engine ever, you are going to build up your entire board. It's going to be full of dragons. And it just feels like you're not necessarily differentiating in a way with regards to using these action rows. You know, you're going to use them all in some respect. It's just whether you do it early or later. I would have liked it maybe to be a little bit tighter on that front because the whole idea of like getting resources fixed now, you're not doing it by a dice and, you know, using a lot of these dragon abilities means that you can be swimming in resources and cards from time to time and just not have a great deal to do with them. You know, if anything, this game, for being more complex, feels more loose than Wingspan did, which is kind of odd. Now, is that a good or a bad thing? Hard to tell, because I'm normally one of the ones who doesn't like games to be too tight, too punishing. But, you know, Wingspan, I never thought to be a punishing game. It's a light, fluffy game. But if you're going to make this complex and give me more fiddly steps to deal with, then surely I would have expected it to be a little bit tighter as well. So yes, Wormspan is a solid game. It's already 90% Wingspan, and Wingspan is one of my favorite games ever. So you'd have to work especially hard to completely corrupt the formula and make it a terrible experience. So yes, I'm going to play this, and yes, I'm going to enjoy it, but the changes that they've made, for the most part, I feel detract rather than elevate. You know, there's certainly some bits I do like that they've put in. I do like this Dragon Guild track. It's generic and it's boring It's boring and themeless in that respect, but in terms of mechanics, it still works pretty well and I like it with the added bit of variety. And removing the dice tower, I can take or leave. The dice never bothered me in the original one. I could easily get round the resources fine, you know, if you're good at the game, but... You know, removing the gold cards is good, although check out my top 10 house rules video for how I fix the gold cards in original wingspan, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. But the rest of the changes in this, I just feel are detractions, not major detractions, apart from the coins. I still think this mechanic is garbage, but you know, everything else is still decent. I mean, I don't like necessarily having to jump through an extra step just to put a card down, but it's not a massive deal. I'll still like it. You know, do I wish that the graphic design was a bit better on these ones? Yes, but it's still half decent and it's not terrible. Do I prefer the art in Wingspan? Yes, but this art is still nice. I just wish I didn't have to cover it up with eggs constantly, you know, and you know, do I much prefer birds to dragons? Oh, hell yeah, I much prefer birds to dragons. Dragons are a generic trope and certainly I don't need a massive compendium to tell me about a bunch of dragons that I don't need to know. I mean, I just noticed one on the front here. 
Since the beginning of reliable record keeping, circa 1850, there have been no known instances of an ancient one dying of natural causes. Oh, who gives a flying John Spartan, you are fined one credit for a violation of the verbal morality statute. And of course, you've got the added length, you've got the added downtime between turns because you're waiting with multiple actions and there's more stuff to trigger. So, yeah, the game doesn't end up being bad at all. It's still fun. I've still enjoyed every game I've played of this. And certainly, if you have never played a Wingspan game before, I could see you jumping into this one because maybe the theme or you just happen to play this one first and going this game's amazing I really love it. I can totally see that. That is perfectly fine. I still think this is a good possibly great game but I can't review this in a vacuum. You can't ignore the fact that this is essentially 90% wingspan. Is it a cash grab? I wouldn't go quite as far as that. I have seen worse examples of cash grabs lately, but this one is still kind of like, oh, uh, we've already got a game that works and we haven't put out a decent game in the last four or five titles. So, you know, Wingspan's really popular still. So can we just, you know, turn some stuff onto that and make that good? Then great, you've got Wormspan. But, you know, Wingspan is already a fantastic game. I already really love it. And honestly, I own a lot of content for it and I cannot see why you would own both. You know, I would gladly play Wormspan. You know, if anything, I think the solo mode may be a little bit better in Wormspan, but I just can't see myself wanting both on the shelf. Because if I'm going to choose which one I'd rather play, I'd rather play Wingspan. So what point, at what point am I going to say, I'd rather play Wormspan? I'm not, because this one works, you know, neither of them are particularly great at four or five players, but this one is a bit more tolerable at four, this one's intolerable at four, but even at two or three players, this one will play quicker than that one. The solo mode, I think, is slightly better in Wormspan, but the solo mode in this is still pretty decent, especially if you've got Wingspan Asia with the new revised version. The abilities in here are a bit less complex to deal with, so it's more approachable. The theme is more approachable to people, it's an easier teach, uh, but just is a bit, a little bit smoother, a little bit more elegant, and just that much better for it. Yeah, that's what the game was meant to be. So it's kind of weird to, you know, recommend this one to anybody who is already a Wingspan lover. You know, if you've not played Wingspan, or you don't like the theme in Wingspan, or maybe the dice tower was a pain for you, then by all means, grab this one and have a great time with it. For me, I would give it probably a... I'm going to give it a high. It's a high, but I, I think I need to be a little bit tough love here because you have essentially created a 90% same sequel here. I'm going a high 7 out of 10. I was contemplating an 8 because I do think it's still good fun. But, you know, I've got to give it a bit more tough love because you have effectively recycled a formula that already works. Therefore, I can't give you brownie points for getting that bit right because it's already in stone. Um, a bit like the Ticket to Ride Legacy review I did you know, Ticket to Ride was already in place, so I have to rank it based on what you've changed. Well, here, the changes are the weak elements to this game, and I do think that it, it you know, as much as I will gladly play this game, three, three or less players, you know, two or three player game, I will gladly play Wormspan and have a great time, but yeah, I just think that the new things that they've done detract rather than elevate, and so it's a decent game, and certainly probably one of the better titles they've put out in the last, what, four or five titles that they've done at Stonemaier, but yeah, I'm just not seeing the whole, oh yeah, this is going to replace Wingspan, because for me, it doesn't even come close. Oh God, you're killing me! So that's it for me on this episode of The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, then please thumb it up on YouTube and thumb it up on Board Game Geek when the video goes live on the site. Don't forget to check out the other content I've been doing lately. There is a crowdfunding campaign at the moment where the expansion for Street Masters by Steamforge Games is allowing you as the community to name a new boss character. I've done a little video where you can find out about the boss character and the rules for entering. It's not a competition for prizes, it's just a cool thing to say that I named this character and it went into the game, and I can give a shout out later, but it's a cool little project, so by all means check out that video if you can. Let me know your comments down below about these two games. Do you love Wingspan or hate Wingspan? Do you love Wormspan? Do you hate Wormspan? And, you know, more importantly, I want to know about what you perceive to be the changes that you think are elevated by this version or detracted by this version, because that, I think, is going to be an interesting debate topic. Until next time, regardless of whether you prefer for birds to dragons, birds are better than dragons. It's still only a game. So take care, lay an egg, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.